picks up, and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. Can Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Haslinger Elverkel. Fantastic run by Julia Lerner. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans, and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches, and video enthusiasts, and we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe to Ultimate TV, there's lots of the videos, posting, everything, check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ultimate TV. Regardez Ultimate TV. Deviens un membre de Ultimate TV et fais grandir ta communauté. Stop Ulti TV, follow me, and you can give me Ultimate of Andromeda. If you want to help Ulti TV, you can be a member of Ulti TV. Thumbs up for Ulti TV! Everyone, follow Ulti.tv on Instagram, on YouTube, they've got everything. Best content! Like their pictures if you love Frisbee, just do it. We're counting on you! Leave me a love for Ulti TV! Became member of Ulti TV! Mamma mia! Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. We live in a world where everything can be referenced online. Imagine if the greatest moments in our sport were never filmed. Eurodisc continues to do what it takes to make free-to-watch live streams a reality. Let's leave nothing to the imagination. We'll consume the action live. And we'll support those that help to make it happen. If it wasn't streamed, it didn't happen. Eurodisc.
morning. It's just about past the midday. It is, in fact, past the midday. Good afternoon, and welcome back to Limerick. We are here, of course, as we have been all week for the European Ultimate Championships. You're on Alti TV, and we have reached the knockout stages in this quarterfinal action. I can't believe this is all happening. I'm so excited. I am Stefan Rapazzo, and I'm here with Hannah Pendlebury. Hannah, France, Germany in a quarter. Wow. Tell us more. Well, it really has been helter-skelter all week long in the mixed division. Very few unbeaten teams. And, of course, a very close game for the French against the Poland mixed team who got their way into the bracket by playing pre-quarters earlier on today. Very feisty teams and well games experience really pressed the French. And, of course, the Germans having taken the defeat to Great Britain on the stream earlier. They've lost Dennis Holzer. Lily Troutman will be playing in this game on defense after having that muscle strain. She's all taped up and will be coming out to try and chase down some blocks for Team Deutschland. But the name of this game for Germany camp is to play a little bit more boring on offense, Stefan. They've played a little bit loose in this tournament, of course, casting our mind back to the beginning. Those really quirky conditions, stormy showcase action against the Irish. Apocalyptic almost. <laughs> Indeed. It was a real fiery affair. We know they're capable though from that game itself of surmounting some pretty intense comebacks but as you see the energy being risen in the centre of the French circle. Of course as you say Stefan for one of these teams to not make it into semi-finals, it's just straight up tragic. I, it, it, I, like, I mean, obviously you guys were all watching three months ago and we made our prediction show. These were the two teams I picked to be in the final. Uh, they could, even after their week of play, be justifiably playing in the final, but that's not the way it is. We're in the quarterfinals. One of these teams is going out. One of these powerhouse nations will be eliminated within 100 minutes and that is hard to wrap your head around it really is Stefan I'd be sad to see either team be knocked out in these tender stages it feels like we're already in semi-finals though which I have to say as a commentator I'm not too mad about oh. but I think from this game at this moment in the championship bracket it's always for a coach this is where tactical adjustments your team should already know them. The style of play you're coming out with, it should be running, coursing through their veins. This is now about emotional fortitude. Which team can rise, put together their best, the O-line's battling it out. Certainly, as we said, the Germans got turned quite a lot last time. And of course, the French have also been tested. But starting this game on offense, it does look to be... I should know, I say that. Neither team currently have a disc in hand. Oh, there we go. It's just been hidden underneath the French player. But of course, the French, in terms of the emotions, they have a bit more youth on their side, of course, not entering the under-24s division this year, just focusing on seniors for the French Federation. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how the, the vets and the youngsters have merged together over the course of this programme. We got a lot to talk about over the course of the next 100 minutes. We cannot wait and we are underway. The first pole does go out of bounds and it will come to the brick mark by this German mixed contingent, Hogan with the disc in hand. Yeah, nice depth, but uh, hopefully we'll see more pulls inbounds. It's, so, it's almost still conditions right now. Hogan at the spot, Fenrich on the mark. First underneath comes by the Germans, it's Prunes. Prunes takes the lateral cup, looks up field, she puts it straight away. Volchak on the chase and it curves out to the hill. The first break chance goes to the French. Well, that's not boring ultimate, is it? That was not the way they had called it if boring ultimate was in the playbook. Well, Levka Volchak was very free in the deep space, but that is not the way to shoot a same third hark. High difficulty rating, but First turnover, very early stages. Early stages, Justine Bru takes about 10, 15 meters from her own goal where it went out of bounds and it puts it into play to Berthe. Pauline Berthe from Grenoble Monkey and they've given it straight back. Hogan to Diekman. Diekman shoots Metzger on the chase. 
First goal still unavailable. Goes out again and a flurry of turnovers in the early stages. Well, a thumbs up from Diekman there. Knew that that wasn't the best execution, but two turnovers already for this Germany O-line. Of course, you know, they're good at playing defense and recovering. We saw that in the GB game, but we don't want to see them tired out too early. French now seeing if they can generate this break they've worked so hard for. Bru goes deep. Fenrich on the chase, Hogan joining the party. Everyone, Fenrich gets up bigger than them all. Sends to Eva Borno. She looks three meters out, dumps back to Bru. Bru inside to Eva Borno. Borno goes wide. Fenrich is there. The French break after a multitude of turns. Well, my eardrums are already being tested to their limits. Goodness gracious. Well, it took the second ask for the break to come, but that is quite the opener for France. A ripper out of the air for Benjamin Fenrich. Let's get another look at that big shot out the arm of Justine Bru. You can see that was a bit of poaching off from Lasse Hook and just trying to encourage that deep spot. I think actually it was trying to hit Bouillon, the uh, the number 72 was miles free of his defender. But a lovely, um, well, not ambitious, confident play from the French D-line. They have come out to play in this match because, of course, this is elimination now. I'll shout out Benji Fenrich every time he steps on the field. When he makes plays, it just makes it that much easier. The speedster is no good. Uh, the stalwart, he's been there forever. I've had the pleasure of coaching him. He is a workhorse, and I will say it again, the fastest person in this facility, in this whole tournament, I would put my money on him. Well, since we've had a compressed tournament format, Stefan, maybe on Saturday or maybe on, well, not, no, not no, late Friday evening. Everyone's going to be too tired and ready to party. But maybe we'll have to have some athletics track action between uh, some of the athletes here. Love to see it happen. The old Dulio, we'll talk about that, but... The Aussies do that at their final, a, a full field sprint at the halftime. Diekman, danger as he's known, comes under. Now Volzak and Borno sends herself flying. Prien gets a touch. Nikki Prien moves it laterally to Volzak. Ooh, and the under to Kuschel, and he can't hang on. And the French are gonna get another chance to break. The German offense not quite clicking yet. This must be a bit of a familiar, dreaded feeling for the Germans. Malvin Schmidt, the youngster. One of the silver medalists at the WJUC last year, 2022 providing the youth and to this French squad. That one floats up, handled by Voirnesson. Stall out, called by Kuchel and likely contested if the disc has come back. Schmidt goes hammer immediately. Voirnesson's hit with it and handles. Two meters out on the corner, very low and nice throw back to Schmidt in the middle. Schmidt inside, outside, gets Boyon. And then it goes right through the hands and they can't convert. Carla Eller can't hang on. I do believe that was Sasha Poetsolowski. No, right you are, Steph. My mistake. But again, the Germans get redeemed off an error from the French. There was huge pressure on that, though. 
and almost an error there. Metzger did well to handle Fester, one of the Fester twins, that's Marike. Now Hugen goes to Valchuk. Valchuk looks inside, Prien gives an option, picked up low, less than 10 meters away. Looking for the inside, goes back to Metzger, then to center. Prien's gonna have time to get there. Prien now to Hogan. Hogan, he goes big with the arcing forehand, Diekman there, but way too much on that one, Hannah. Flashed it well out of bounds, does Lasso Hogan. There is a little bit of a tap on the back from David Metzger. It's a really nice option, but the Germany O-line just need to mentally reset. They're playing a lot looser than they need to. Like they do, they are having to grind out. The, the French are really trying to take away the unders as much as humanly possible. Take away those round resets and really pressure the throws to be picture perfect. Simone Ruel comes under. He gets to Boyon and he's on his bike. Oh, they thought about it, but he put it away. Now comes under Voirnesson. Boyon, he's put it this time, but it's Diekman who's in front. I'm not sure Malvin Schmidt's young legs can get there, but he almost proved us wrong. Well, I'll tell you what, Danger thought he'd done more than enough there, but Diekman nearly got made a complete fool of. But that is the attitude difference, I think, right now between Germany and the French. Malvin Schmidt really just like, no, every moment counts. And that, folks, may well pay off dividends as this game develops. Kuschel and the Germans arrive at the goal line and get their next possession underway. Nikki Prien goes back to Kuschel. Thought about the big stuff a couple times over and then swings it to Diekman. Diekman gets first her nice catch out of her. Back to Diekman. Now inside, whips it to Volchuk. Nikki Prien. Sanders puts it deep, first they're on the chase, but again, too far in front. The Germans aren't hitting. Well, that's not very Schmidt. Got to be more Schmidt, Foster. You've got to have a go at it. Obviously, there is an, you know, a moment in the mind where you think, okay, conserve your body make sure you don't injure yourself early stages because that can obviously really mentally drain a team but i don't know when you're fighting to stay in the championship bracket maybe that was a missed opportunity because we've definitely seen Marie Forster make some real huge plays so far this tournament malvin schmidt eva borno french coming out of their own end looking at another break chance Simone Ruel on the chase. Diekman tries to catch up. Volchak was in front, but Ruel handles foul retracted. But they're going to move back to their spots. Well, when the foul is called, it is a stoppage, so everyone else downfield needs to resume their positions as the raindrops start to fall here on field 15. Back in play in the hands of Simon Ruel. He goes inside to Juliette Ruel. Now Eva Borno. She fires the hammer. Ruel is there! Two breaks in 10 minutes. The French command the starting section of this game. Well, the breaks are coming for the French like the raindrops now currently falling on our heads. They are absolutely relentless. Well, when I was speaking to the German coaches ahead of this match, Stefan, they were saying that if I gave them a magic wand and said they could control one part of their defense in this game, it would be that their opponents would never feel comfortable that the O-line for the French would always feel that little bit off the mark, that, you know, not like they're getting their plan A. But right now, it is all about this French team pushing the Germans off of plan A. Unfortunately, Nikki Prien can't just throw to herself. There aren't two of her out there. She seems to be having still a decent time of it, but I think 
the loss of Dennis Holzer, who is certainly one of the big throwers on this O-line, is being he's definitely being missed. Now, we're seeing players for this German offense being pushed into positions that aren't their, you know, their go-to look. There have been some really close moments, but the counter-attack of the French, they really have come into this game so hungry. A point to prove, and deservedly so, carrying in with that first seed into the championship. This is as good of a start as they could have asked for. Well, it says Tana, the German throwing needs tidying up. Let's see how their third chance. Tisson, she's gone deep, Hornschmeyer there. Torben keeps his toe in, goes back to Vendeholm. Giannis Vendeholm, and they've got a D-line out playing O now to show them how it's done. Hornschmeyer. Tobin Hornschmeyer back to Tissen and back again. Hornschmeyer shoots. Vendeholm puts the toe down, and the D-line gets the O assignment done. It's exactly the same thing we saw happen in the game against Great Britain for Germany, which of course they lost eventually, but they did tighten it up at the end. But when you have the breaks conceded, that is how you have to do it sometimes. Bring out a different set of folks. Tiss on there. I mean, if you pulled across a player to come and play on the O-line, I think Kari Tisson has got to be one of them. One of the heartbeats of this Germany mix side. Such a fantastic coach, such presence of mind and a decorated career playing for Team Germany, of course. Lovely throw from Hunschemeyer, of course, on that World Game squad. So the D-line being rotated through and now it's going to be the other defensive look coming out. Of course, look out for the tower of a man, Marvin Blechler. Yes. That guy is huge. He is. I was stood behind him in the queue to the bathroom and I was like, oh, wow, you really are that big up close as well as afar. But the rain starts to really pour. I did ask the Germany coaches if they'd check the forecast, Stefan, and they weren't expecting rain. Expect the unexpected. It's happening now. Nasser, MB Vogel, with the disc for the French mix side. Up two breaks is the first time their O-line seen the pitch. Poitsikolski goes under, Matias with a look. She fakes the big, now back to Poitsikolski on the in inside. Into that dump space, then Gaël Anselin cuts up line, continuation up line to Poitsikolski in the French O-line, looking sharp thus far. Fouquet gives to Mbé Vogel. Nasser stops to assess. Now fakes the inside and gives it to Fouquet in the dump space. Now shot for goal. Anselin puts the foot down, hands up in celebration though, not everybody as certain that was in. There was a small question in my mind, Steph. So uh, the players on the field though, they are gonna be fairly sure. Nobody's gonna need to see our replay. I'm sure we'll have it for you anyway though, for your enjoyment at home. But Dom looking says, yep, no, I was looking at that, looking. And I thought it was in, so signaled by the there opponents. It is again for curiosity, even though it's already been called. Yep. yep, well assessed on the field. All is good. But just about squeaks it out. So clearly, I have to say thus far in this game, Stefan, both of the D lines for either side are really putting that pressure on. It's just going to be a case of can the French continue to c in this game uncracked? Yeah, that is going to be the tale. Indeed, they came out to a fiery start. They got the brakes, put them in the back pocket, but those may not be safe hanging out in the back pack pocket all game long, the way the German defense came. Uh, you know, credit to the French O-line as well. They did maintain their composure. They put it in, but the, the, that was very, very tight. Metzger. Gets it from Hogan and gives to Kushol. That's Nikki Prien who comes under in the natural O-line back on the field for the Germans. Hogan. He goes back to Kushol and then gets Metzger on the under. Metzger shoots deep. Volchak on the chase. Borneau in position. And Borneau does just enough 
to prevent. What a play by Bourneau to break it up even without a touch. This is really not conservatism. Volchak is an amazing athlete. You can see they're so close, but so is Eva Bourneau. She's incredible. I mean, the amount of pressure able to put on... Say, was it Lison Bourneau? Lison, that was Lison. Lison. They wear 13 and 18, so it's very difficult for my yes. tired eyes to figure out exactly which one. But both Bornos are très bon at playing defense. That is for darn sure. You want way more separation than that. Lison puts one up, and that's knocked away too much under it. And we do have both the Bornos on the field at the same time too, of course. Metzger now in the Germans. Hogan to Prunz. Coons goes back, Hogan handles that with two hands. And Volchak comes under. Fake the big, now around into the middle to Hogan. Hogan too far in front for Prunes and the struggles continue. Still the throw, Stefan, still. I just wanna give like a comfort break for the Germans right now, just to throw some passes, because I just want a tight game at the moment. There's going to be the French. Well, there we go. What you it is call a comfort break, they call a timeout. <laughs> well, there we go. I think that is a wise choice. A little bit of a break in momentum because at the moment, it's like a juggernaut racing down the field from this French defense. French looking good in the opening stages. We're going to take a break while they do, and we'll be back after these words. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of Ultimate Strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. Back in after the comfort break <laughs> that was taken, uh, otherwise known as a timeout. A couple extra turns, and we're just having a chat there at the break as well. Like, Germans got to find a way to sharpen up here. They got to, if they maintain this kind of a pace style, this could this could break away from them. Well, we have both to a two of the quarterfinals here. But the other live stream stuff, I can give you a brief update. If you want to watch both of these games, we will not blame you. Feel free to do so live for you to view. Three breaks immediately, or well, three scores immediately coming out for Latvia against Ireland, who of course we were also expecting to see in semi-finals. So it's all going off here in mixed. And those two played to Universe Point earlier in the week, so it could be revenge for Latvia. Let's see how that goes. But more important, right here, Boyon. And the French. Up to Ruel. Can they break again? Ruel. Looking very flustered on that sideline, but finally gets one inbounded to Nemos. Boyon. Back to Nemos. To Boyon again, he turns around and looks upfield. They're 30 meters out, and the gainer was headed towards Lison Bourneau, but Nikki Prien came in for the block, and they're talking about the contact that happened because of it. Well, I'm, yeah, let's get another look at that one, see if we have a bit more of a 
wide angle. Yeah, it for a moment in real time that looked like Prien had that space well before, but you can see from the replay there is a bit of kind of coming around that shoulder of the offense. Yeah, I think uh, by my perspective too, that was uh, Nikki Prien did invade the space just a bit too much and came through taking the body. She had a good line at the disc, but uh, foul, no contest. No, nope, she's retracted it. Retracted. Well, you can see that Nikki Prien was going on that line and actually the adjustment required to come and make a play on the disc, the throw was a little bit off. So clearly, after discussing, the players decided that it was the, th the thrower-led error that caused that turnover, but a great attack from Prien to get the disc back. Very interesting. But as we always say, it's up to them to make the interpretations, and I'm sure they're getting it right if they're all happy and playing Prien to Metzger. Metzger to Volchak. Prien off and running, as was Hogan. Hogan on the chase. Too much once again. These throws got too much on them. But you know what I like better? making the bid all the same because if that had come off he'd managed to just get a trailing edge catch momentum shifter for sure but again the squeeze there was separation for Horgan not quite as much as to make the throw super comfortable for Volchuk now the French Voirnesson goes to Lison Borneau and now Bryce Nemos Lison Borneau. Boyon. And this D line for the French, a very young line. Eva Borneau gets Nemos. Back inside. Voirnesson to Juliette Ruel. Inside to Nemos. Nemos fakes the big, puts it away, and goes around to Eva Bono. That is Lison Bono. Now to Eva Bono. Eva shoots. That doesn't look like it's going to work. And the Germans will get another opportunity to get that very precious hold. Yep, a, tris a sister truss shot there. But you could really see almost triple coverage into the deep space. German O-line really reading that play very well, understanding exactly what the French were trying to do. Into the corner. That's Prunes, who calls the foul with acceptance. Inside, Volchak picks one up as she goes down to turf. Stall count mounting and inside to Kuschel. Now Metzger. Metzger leads to Prunes. Prunes puts one up. Bank on the chase. Eller coming, but Bank gets there first. And Germany celebrate as they should right now. Well, that is more like it. So rather than waiting for the cut to develop with the separation, that is a really beautiful lead out into the breakside space. Get another look at that play. So Prinz starting us back in. A little bit of a stumble for Volchuk, but all happy enough. But let's get a look at the mark. She tries to prevent that Svenja Prunes one. Yeah, you can just see, because Prunes is so free on that upline, has the momentum and acres of room. A brilliant chase from Carla Ele to try and deny the score. But Saskia Bick opens up the hips, puts on the jets, on the boots, and that will hold us. But six turnovers we said it in the gp game we don't want to see the o-line coming out here and having to play so much defense i know they can rise the german o-line have so much experience so much maturity from an emotional perspective these teams have both suffered losses in recent history of course the french going out in quarterfinals against italy mixed that was a big lesson for them. Their coach said that the proudest moment was seeing the two weeks after that, how this team responded socially, bonding online. Love to see it. Great ways to be able to respond, but now the big show, now the brackets, those losses can't be recovered for. That one too far, 
And that's the first turnover by the French O-line. Cohen Shemaya there, just trotting back into the stack, of course, World Games experience. Has one of the, uh, the least favorite looks of ultimate accessorization. Got the towel in the shorts. I love that as well, but that was, yeah, practical. Sweaty hands, you need to counter it somehow. The German counterattack on its way. Torben Hornschmeyer goes deep. It's Nasser M.B. Vogel trying to step in front and he does for a second. Stulet gets a second chance but still can't quite get there. Well, both players way too experienced to give up on the second effort and a really great piece of defense from Mbe Vogel. Watsikowski gets the first pass. He goes deep straight away, but it's knocked away with immediacy. That one by Baumgart. Game of throws here, Stefan. Yeah, they are happy to go one way to the other. Baumgart gets it back and puts it behind Vendholm. Picked up right away, that one. Easy does it for Gervig. And the O-line gets a hold in peculiar fashion. Well, not quite the same layer of turnovers, but four, two opportunities squandered there for the German D-line to get it back. Just a little bit of a lack of focus, but enjoying the confidence from the German D-line. Because, of course, there are, it's a contrast of styles in how you get yourself mentally prepared as to whether you play on the offensive line or the defensive line. Certainly there are some rituals of reset that the Germans have to try and settle the ship for their sort of clutch of seven to ten players who come out for Germany on D, on offense, sorry. But just that miscue there, looking for the fast movement and a timeout by the looks of it here on the field. And you indeed see some of the lines preparing themselves. But the French still holding on just about by the tips of their fingers to their lead in this game. Don't go anywhere. This game will continue to develop first half stages. France leading four to two. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. So, Stefan, a bit of a clue in from our uh, wonderful stats keepers and the wonderful Nicholas Ho. Thus far, there have been 45 passes per team. But let's have a look at the turnovers. That's the difference there. That's the difference in score, those extra two turns by the Germans. But what looked like it was just... The, the German error at the very, very start has now, uh, the French are reciprocating and making their own bits of errors here. Uh, still no break for the German side, but definitely break chances. Now, on attack, Metzger gets Ferster underneath. That is Marike Ferster again, one of the twins. Back in the corner, it's Metzger. First uh, to Volchuk. Volchuk being aggressively marked by the bouncing Borno that Deva, but finds a way inside. Kushal. Kushal goes wide to Diekman. Pick call upfield. There is a pick called, and everybody's echoing it now. It's been heard. Looks like the disc might go back to Diekman as. 
Unless, of course, on that far side they'd agreed that it didn't affect. Nope, it's going back. Back to Deepman. But this is much better execution. Really enjoyed that high release flick from Volchak. Now Fester gets a gainer from Diekman and then Volchak going down to knees. Volchak, Metzger cuts up line and she looks back to center. Now she's gone deep. It's Diekman there. No, it is not. That is Hugen. But the Germans score one way or the other and that is a little bit better as far as they're concerned. Well, it was really lovely, boring ultimate up until that last pass, the high stall situation, but that's more easily going to find its mark. It's still a ambitious, well, not ambitious, that's the wrong word. It's a lead pass where you're really putting a lot of trust in your connections. That's a Hergen going into that back corner and a lashed throw from Levka Volchak hits its mark, of course. Lasse Hergen, one of the teammates that was very pivotal in getting Germany mixed through to semi-finals back in, actually no, I'll tell, you, I'll tell a lie, getting into finals back in windmill. Of course, they boshed GB out of the bracket in the late stages, but uh, Hergen really was on fire in that game. Having himself, he just ate up the stats board. I mean, maybe we can bring those stats up for you at some point. We do have them. Big shout out to commentary source patriarch Tom Styles, of course, stepping away from the microphone, but uh, doing some programming work in the background. He's never too far, Tom Styles. Guy Lancelin <coughs> gets the under to Chemino. Chemino feeds Ancelin. Ancelin shot deep. Matthias had separation, Neubert coming. The separation maintained, as is the goal, a clean hold for the French. Yeah, a little bit of a gimme there for the French O-line. Clara Matthias just found so open, so free. That has got to be some kind of defensive mess up. So, so it's Neubert underneath it. Was such a, a fantastic defender, Saskia Neubert. The closing speed she has not quite enough though to catch up after the missed assignment. Of course, Matthias has come through the juniors program. There's a lot of youth, as we've already mentioned, on this team. She sort of sits somewhere in the middle of the pack, being the age of 25. She's been playing for nine years now. But the way this sort of French team is bonded, because they do have a real range of ages, they've got some super high IQ Frisbee veterans on their side that can still absolutely rinse you whatever part of the field you're on. But the French coaches were saying that actually their more experienced players have been enjoying having fun with the young parts of the team. They're really kind of, it's a bit Wes Anderson. You know how Wes Anderson makes his children characters very serious and his adults really playful? It's sort of a little bit like that. That's how this French team gel together so very, very well. Hogan and the Germans. First throw to Diekman. Back center to Hogan. A lagging defense to start things off, but switches to a very clear ma match as they get going. Diekman, Metzger on the under. Metzger's wound up. Levka, Volchak on the chase, but She's gonna need rockets to catch up to that one. Miss thrown by Metzger. Yep, a nice opener for the offense. I like that kind of trying to isolate the players in the, in the center of the field with the side stack, but an intelligent response from the French D-line clustering around before finding their true assignments. Can the Germans earn back the chance to hold or will the French make him pay again? Begwen Demo, better known as Beg Dem, gets a touch. He gets it again through Bru. Inside break, Lison Bordeaux, and there is a pick called on that play. Yeah. 
Lison Borneau taps it in and then throws to Benjamin Fenrich. Beguin Demo to Nemos, he's lashed it! And it's Fenrich on the chase. He's got it in front of Bake. And the French make him pay another break, Hannah. That's three in these early stages. I, when that just went up, Stefan, I was a doubter. I kind of went, what, sorry, what were you trying to do? And then in the deep space, I just see Fenrich emerging. Again, the connections and the timing on this one. You can see the kind of you know, soft mark maybe poaching off a little bit. But again, it's that exploded coverage because surely Saskia Bick was not the initial matchup for Fenrich. Perhaps a blown switch somewhere else down the field where they thought they had that athlete covered but reeled in beautifully and three breaks now for the French. They have come out meaning absolute business into this match, of course. It's been a mental challenge for Team Germany. They've had injuries. They've had, obviously, that incident that any of the Frisbee nerds on social media will already know about. Leave it at that. Absolutely. The spirit scores are all publicly available. You can see for yourself. But uh, which has actually been really interesting, seeing kind of the some of the teams with consistent feedback, how they're working on those issues, and also the responses to the comments and discussions from spirit captains. It's a really nice thing to see how these elite players respond. Here come, speaking about response, this one necessary. Diekman goes and gets the up line cutting Metzger. Metzger gets one to Nikki Prien. Prien looks back, Metzger avails. Up and over, Diekman, toes down and in. Looked to shoot up line, then waited for Metzger. Metzger picks up with the left. Redistributes a push pass backwards. Now Levko Alchak in for goal to Diekman. And they come good and hold to bring it back to within two. Jakob Diekman there, I think, seizing the opportunity to put this team a little bit on his back. Obviously, I mean, look at the man. That is a person, an athlete you want to be dominating in the end zone, using that wingspan and reach. But here you see him playing on the inside of the field, you know, really just generating the flow, taking some of the pressure off of the rest of the handler set. Using that wingspan, not to rip people apart in the deep space, but to just get that reset a little bit much easier. Certainly from the French side of things, they have a couple of lanky athletes, but not quite the same sort of statuesque height of some of these German mixed male matching players. But an opportunity for their D-line to come out again and see if they continue to ask some questions. They've certainly generated turnovers against the French O-line. But can they punch one of their break opportunities in? O-line for France, MB Vogel. Opens things up and goes to Gaël Anselin, one of the mixed stalwarts for France and his club, Sesky Distis. May also have been recognized from his work last summer with the Mooncatchers over in Cincinnati and of course, GOAT for USA U Nationals. And of course, a late stage injury sub who made huge plays at Worlds last year. Oh, indeed he did. We all remember the foot block. It was absolute scenes on the sidelines. Absolute scenes. Now back for his home country. This is a campaign he's been committed to for a very long time. He looks around, couldn't get Mbe Vogel until late in the sequence. Now does. Now Mbe Vogel looks to repay the favor. He's shot deep. Oslin goes up early with the defense charging and is called a foul by the time he hits the ground. Well, a sandwich of Oslin by the two German defenders, of course, streaking away from the handler set. He was going to catch it a little bit on the bounce. There was the other look. We've got a few people hanging around watching. Here's another look from the tight angle. Well, in terms of the kind of momentum through 
it does look a little bit like there needs to be the turn from Arsenal to make a play on the disc. It's just whether or not there was too much push from the back. Certainly, they both go up quite cleanly vertically, but it's whether or not there's that sort of hit on the back shoulder or the yeah difficult one to call. But it's not what it looks like. It's how it feels to the players. Yeah, that really is it. I mean, we can give our opinions here. We'll, we'll always have one, but and they never matter. Uh, but we're always happy to share. But that is as, as close as they come and really needs to be left to those two to make that call. A lot of touching, but generally pretty good body control overall. It re retains French possession. Nas Mbe Vogel to Gervig. Two throws later. And it cashes in for a goal. That makes it 7-4 on another French hold. Well, Nasser, or Nasser, as he's known, Umbe Vogel, of course, a long-time player for not just France, but sort of so many different clubs. In fact, so we had a bit of pub quiz action for the Ulti TV crew. We uh, entertained some of the players here in Limerick on Monday evening. We had a round of uh, Wikipedia-style player career history. And in fact, we might be able to pull up the document that we had for that and tell you Mbe Fogel's playing history overall. But he has represented so many different teams. Do you see there? Oh, one apiece for everything but goals so far. See, enjoys the scenes. Of course, a very happy man, and all of the French O-line must be very happy indeed because they haven't had to take the field too many times this game. In fact, just the three O points for the French. But, yeah, so the, the quick experience, ultimate vibration from 96 to 2005 for Mbe Fogel. Clapham, Scoggs, Ironside, Goat, Fab Pony, Cusp, Isno, and a bit of AUDL, and then Masters, Ensemble, and Mixed Epoque. So, like... He's been around the block. Absolutely. What a Frisbee CV. What a Frisbee CV. And playing since 1996, when I was just five. I started playing in the same year. In fact, just before. Diekman now, but it's not about me. It's all about Nasser. Here comes German team. Hogan goes to Prien. Prien gets Metzger with a chase coming. Keeps his foot down. Metzger goes forward, Prunes is there, Prunes leads, that throw hanging, and it hugged him, no it didn't! How did he come off with that? Ruel made a defensive play, and Baumgart collected after the tip. What do we say about that? Gotta be more nuts, mate. There was a moment earlier on where there was a first block from Mbe Fogel, who got that initial touch on it, but then continued to stay on his feet and to chase the disc down the second block to stop the Germans. They have woken up. We said at the beginning of the game that Malvin Schmidt for the French side really had the right energy coming in. You've got to just go for it. But look at that second effort. I don't think there was any real opportunity for a second block for the defender, but <laughs> talk about Jakob Diekmann really putting this side already said kind of you know just really rising ascending in this match but uh, the number 83 of course recovering from injury to rejoin this squad he was not there at windmill but he is now I think it's fair to say fully back on form because that was obscenely good yes obscenely good I called him Baumgart there of course that was Diekmann the man known as Danger. Give that credit where credit is due as Fouquet goes to Mbe Vogel, the journeyman. Chevino. Underneath, Matias corrects and corrects her path and, and the disc. Mbe Vogel. Upline came from Anselen, but not able to distribute. Then Chevino comes and steals it from everyone. Chloé Olivier. Olivier, and there is a call on the play as Anselin catches very casually hearing it. Perhaps a foul on Hörnschemeyer? Oh no, uh, a foul on the mark, so it's coming in at zero. Back into the hands of Chemino. Oh, 
Chloé Olivier on the sideline, centers one to Fouquet. Fouquet finds M.B. Vogel. Nass wound up a hammer, put it away. Fouquet did well to hang on to that. Now back to Nasser. Shimmy, no, there's a bit on the hip from Hornschmeyer. Back to Embe Vogel, far sideline. Looking to center, trying to stay engaged, but gets nothing. Onslen goes away. Now Fouquet in the middle of the field. Fouquet 15 meters out. High over the top, over everybody, into the hands of Onslen. A nice breakthrough that floats for a score. That's the half. Well, Coralie Fouquet, I have to say, is a player that will absolutely destroy your mark. I really thought, Stefan, in that point in particular, the Germany defense got the matchups absolutely on point. You had Leonard Trautmann, Lilly, matching up against 4K. Watching Melina Koschnitzky go to battle with Angel Levilla was a thing of beauty to watch, even the male matching players as well. Say even the male matching players. They also got the matchups right. Stuhler taking on Mbe Vogel. You had Wenderholm helping out as well. And of course, that uh, perhaps a bit ambitious layout bid from Torben Hirschemeyer. But you've got to have a go at it, haven't you? Just that nice throwing to the offside of the stack when you're this close to the end zone. We've seen a couple of those sort of what you call a trust throw. But I mean, is that really trust? You're throwing to a pack of your own players. So unless one of the defenders has a little wake up moment and a bit of luck, throwing a soft break to the break side of the stack, more or less, it's just a really smart way to lead your players to your next score. And that will take half eight five. Yeah, Mark's got to do a little bit better job on that one in front of Fouquet. But otherwise, as Hannah said, a beautiful throw, a little bit of trust necessary. But when it's that far to the break side, they just look easy into the hand. Uh, and then certainly, I've had the experience of having my own marks wrecked by Coralie Fouquet at one of my favorite tournaments hosted by the Monkey Team, B.O. We're hoping that one comes back. I circled it on my calendar as my comeback tournament uh, years ago, and it's not been back since COVID, so that's why I haven't come back yet. We're just waiting for the tournament, and, well, and then I'll be back. Can't but, of course, sure. just one of the club sides that's represented by this French team, they said they wanted to represent the French well, and they really are right now, Stefan. Well, that is the half. Teams are going to think about what they got to do. We'll be back with second half action. Don't you go anywhere. We live in a world where everything can be referenced online. Imagine if the greatest moments in our sport were never filmed. Eurodisc continues to do what it takes to make free to watch live streams a reality. Let's leave nothing to the imagination. We'll consume the action live and we'll support those that helped to make it happen. If it wasn't streamed, it didn't happen. Eurodisc. 
search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Second half about to begin here. The French took control of the first half. Three breaks to none, two right off the top. It, the, the Germans have settled since the slow start. Now they've got to find a way to take the momentum back. They have, they have kind of leveled. There's been enough trading despite the, the mid-half br break as well. Well, looking at the shape of this game so far, the break chances that the French have had, and of course, they've scored a third of them, but two looks at the German D-line, they have been a little bit loose with the disc, of course, yeah, the calibre of the defence played by certainly Nasser and Befogel, who we've done a, a decent amount of this first half talking about, considering how few times the O-line for France have come out, but of course, always an impactful individual to have on your team. But Brice Nemoz has been coming through this campaign for the French, a person who is part of, of course, a greater unit. Certainly the amount of kind of ownership that all of the French teammates have put into this campaign. We already mentioned they lost to Italy mixed in quarterfinals, back at windmill. The way they responded was a real kind of Everyone has bought in so hard, but Bristemov is one of the players that really does help to kind of channel and direct that emotional flow and energy. But of course, it's the coach's job to make sure that everyone stays at the correct level of hot and cold. Certainly not a tepid game thus far, but I'm kind of hoping, Stefan, that the Germans can find a little bit of finesse, especially on that D-line, to try and bring this back to a close thriller, because, I mean... There's not going to be many points coming from you from the predictions contest. No, no, I'm only getting one going through. Uh, I won't even remind you how I picked them till maybe the end of the game. For now, as Hannah likes, the Germans are going to need to pick things up to make this one a humdinger. As far as scoreline goes, it, it already is a humdinger as far as what we're getting on the pitch. Stoppage on the play, Mbe Vogel with the disc. Nas Mbe Vogel comes under, Shemino there, but almost a snack on it. Deep shot goes to Płatzakowski, and Troutman does just enough to break it up. What a play by Lena Troutman. Sneaking through like a thief in the night. Lily was not playing in the previous game that we saw the Germans fall to Great Britain. But she's such an impactful defender. You see the closing speed here. Peels off of her assignment. Sees that Hunshamai doesn't quite get a piece of the disc, but by being in front, she forces the adjustment from Sasha Puczkowski. I thought she did get just a tiny piece i think she did just flutter it a bit at the same time as the attempted catch maybe yes maybe no maybe it's just disturbing the air molecules around the flight path but either way a clean hold of the space in front now that is some true mixed quality there from lily troutman and of course had that muscle strain so clearly back to full fighting fitness with that green but taped leg Couple of substitutions, Potts Sokolski out, Benjamin Fenrich in for him. And then we have Erdman who comes out uh, for the number 10 shirt, Koshnitsky, yep. for the Germans. Honchmeyer, 
Winds up, Baumgart comes under. Now Vanderholm. And Gael Oslen moves his pivot mark, throws it inside, MB Vogel knocks it away. He comes under to get it right back from Oslen. Nass sends to Oslen, near sideline, 15 meters away. Gets MB Vogel again in the dump space. Surveying options, goes inside to Fenrich. Static here by the French, but they do continue to make completions. That one needed a layout by Onslen. Inside break, Nass handles with one hand. Had a small window for Fouquet, but didn't take the risk. Now looking, engaging Onslen, he went into the end zone. Leading throw, in front, Fenrich. How did he keep his eye on that with Horstmeyer in front? But he got two hands on it, and they get another goal. Well, a very narrow miss there for Hunschmeyer. As I say, you have to get lucky to get those blocks that just sit on that break side. That one, just enough pace on it to sneak its way through. The nail matching players really grinding that point out for the French. I wonder, Steph, the turnover when the Germans gave it back, who was this throw supposed to be for? Was he trying to find Baumgart or was it actually a little bit of bringing the defender into the other space? Because certainly, I mean, if you're taking up the matchups of some of the best players, the vets of this French squad, maybe you just gotta go and keep them busy elsewhere. Because I think Baumgart was a little bit freer, but that was a really visionary throw to the soft side pocket. And another point punched in the scorecard, nearly at double digits, nearly double the scoreline for the French over the Germans. And the wheels have sort of slipped off the axles here. The French doing their part to knock that train off its course. And they just keep coming nine to five. What a way to make a living. The French continue to dictate the pace and send the pole to Hogan. Metzger and Prunes get the offensive attack going. Kusha to Hogan. Now to Diekman, he catches on his chest, straight back to Hogan. Metzger comes under for a touch. Prien is open, Diekman on the run. Prien doesn't put it, Ruel was trying to stay close. Up and over. Uh, Eva Bourneau calls the stall out and Nikki Prien does not agree. Well, I think that's the second chat between those two athletes who've been matching each other beautifully so far in this game. And it's another retracted call. It's clearly some excellent spirit between Bourneau and Prien. So can the Germans hang tough and retain possession? because I think another break here is just the final nail in the coffin. But I'm happy to be proven wrong if that is the case. Don't you worry about it, folks. It would seem the way, but anything can happen in this game, and it very often does. Hogan sends deep, Kushal on the chase. He gets big, boxes out Schmidt, and takes that one home. Yeah, Malvin Schmidt continuing to remind us exactly how much he wants to win this game. But there's nothing you can do. Severin, Severin Kuchol just ripping up that upline speed. A really great execution of the throws. That is probably my biggest thing for this German O-line is that they have started to settle more into the execution from the hands. They had some real miscues in the early stages, but they have found that presence of mind. Yes, they are still being pushed to the very edges of their offensive capabilities. This is not necessarily plan A that we're seeing coming out of the German playbook, but the trust and the connections are starting to develop. So that a hold with no turnovers, 11 passes required, but the more passes that you get together, the more completions that happier you feel. 
And now it's the job of the D-line to see if they can indeed convert one of these break opportunities. And a turn of fortune in the other match. Are we going to see one here on this quarterfinal, Stefan? We would all love to see it. Even French supporters to some end would probably wouldn't mind a bit more of resistance here. No, that can't be true. The French supporters will like being in front. Well, iron sharp as iron, as they say, or metal sharpens metal. There is some truth to that, of being able to come through elimination rounds, being really tested as Matias lets one get away, and a rare, rare break chance for the German D-line. Hornschmeier slows things down. Well, the French coaches didn't want to see any early stage errors, and there is one. Torben Hornschmeier goes to Kuznitski. Inside break, very nice break there indeed. And that one finds Baumgart. And in to goal, one throw later. Vendaholm collects. Germans get their first break of the game. Well, Janis Vendaholm getting another stat for the tournament but his first of this game, their first German break. They had a go at one of those soft side throws before. The first one I think was intended for Diekmann when they were on offense and that went way out of bounds. But the sun has emerged out here once more. So maybe this Germany mixed team a little bit solar powered, but of course, who do we see on the far sidelines? As we check out that replay, a lovely inside shot from Manila Kosnitsky. Touch on the far side with the replay, but it is indeed the Germany women's side come to support this mixed team on the far side. Oh, you mean the famous guest from Limerick Late Night Live at from 55? Absolutely. Well, of course, one of the things about this German program is they're trying to connect each other together. Athletes certainly all stay in the same complex. They had the scrimmages at their last training camp that they all really enjoyed. But the other thing that I want to point out that the Germans have been doing, which is going to be success for them in the future, Stefan, is that they've actually been connecting their coaching staff. So their coaching experience and knowledge being shared across the divisions, across the age ranges, you know, masters all the way to under 17s. And that is a real good thing for the future of German Ultimate. Yeah, great conceptual plan for the overriding program out of the Germans. Chloe Olivier goes back to Potsakowski. Good to see him back on the field. Olivier throws underneath to Lison Bourneau. Bourneau to Anselin, and there is a pick upfield. Yeah, Lurking just got a little bit of the back of Bourneau and Kuhn. Lison Bourneau throws to Fouquet. Fouquet finds Sasha Potsokolski and back to Fouquet. Coralie Fouquet goes under to Potsokolski and he had to work to keep that out of the hands of Wallace, the defender. Anselin now to Chemino. Romain Semino to Lison Bourneau. To her sister, Eva Bourneau. Bourneau goes around, Chloé Olivier. Inside, Bourneau. Bourneau look to move quick now, cuts inside. And another hold to Semino. The French got double digits on the board. They certainly do, but it's not double the score line. Of course, the Germans clawing one break back so far in this second half but they're going to need a good couple more. They had the natural advantage. They won the toss and started this game on offense. So it really has been all about those French breaks of score. But that was one of the few times, Stefan, where we've seen a little bit of discomfort from the offense of the French, really pinning them very well. The hand marks, exceptional. The breakthroughs from the female matching athletes out here has been so good. And certainly the player at that point for me, Eva Bonneau, that's her third assist for this match. Of course, the World Games was a highlight of her career playing that last year. And of course, 
just such a young athlete, still just 20 years of age, played for the under 20s back in 2019 at EYUC. Says that actually one of her sporting heroes is indeed a German athlete, not on this mixed side, but Anna Gerner, of course, on the sideline on her crutches, having had that dislocated knee, yes, well, two days ago. Easy but choice for a sporting hero. Absolutely. You were very excited to see her in our studio yesterday, weren't you, Stefan? No, I was just normal excited. <laughs> to be Metzger. fair, we've had some amazing guests. Metzger cut, uh, from his own goal line here. Prunes cuts across in the lateral space. I stall count. Kushal gives a cut, but not much space. There's a pick, and luckily so, because options were not abundant. Indeed not. I think, realistically, the Germans need to cycle a little bit more. They stare at an option, and when there isn't that one tiny channel on the upline, they need a little bit more coming through, maybe even two options. Why not? Prunes. Nice throw to first. <laughs> Kroons and Ruel having a battle watching them for a moment. Now Diekman goes to Erdman. Erdman gets a few more meters to Prunes on the under. Diekman in the dump space. Wide around Hernschmeyer there, so is Metzger. They put it, Metzger steals it as a near handoff. Hernschmeyer. Metzger, that's low, but a play from Prunes ensures the possession. Deep bomb, Diekman there, but two French defenders. Is no good club teammates, Gruel and Fenris, break it up. I don't care that she threw the turnover there. Up until that point, watching that number 33 for Germany, Svenja Prunes going to absolute work sitting in the harness space, striking deep with aggression to really grind the underneath resets. But can the German O-line now get the disc back? In the hands of Justine Bru. Small inside cut to Eva Bono. Now the big shot, Ruel on the chase, Hornschmeyer in position, and almost a second effort for Schmidt, but Hornschmeyer does what he needs to to break that up. I would like the stat, please, for how long Melvin Schmidt has spent on the floor in this game. He has thrown himself every which way to try and get blocks. You can see him there not involved in that amazing turnover opportunity for this D-line. Of course, we see Borno playing double duty. Ever Borno, the 13. Hans Schmeier. Inside to Diekman with Fenrich on his hip. And foul accepted immediately, apologetic immediately. Yeah, there's a lot of body to hit. Diekman goes inside to Prunes. Back to Diekman around the defender, Fenrich. Inside cut to Honshemaya. And another double bicep flex. That's a pick. Yeah, kill up in traffic was Marvin Schmidt trying to stop Sarevin Kushol from ripping open the deep space. Hansmeyer. Goes to Kushol. Kushol sends it deep. Hansmeyer has separation. Gets up and a beautiful take for the German goal, eight to 10, back within two. Well, Hernschemeyer being crossed over there to play offense. He's been on the D-line for Germany every other point in this match. Well, this is where we're gonna start to see the coaches tightening the lines up something chronic as we get towards, of course, those last couple of points as they try and fight to stay in the championship bracket top side. Of course, quarterfinals here for us Already mentioned the fact that Eva Borno already collecting three assists in this game have been pulled across. I really like that shot this time hitting Hönschemeyer in stride. The previous one that came off the hand of Svenja Prunz was when Hönschemeyer was already in the deep space. At least I think it was Torben. 
could have been one of the other male matching players on the team. But certainly, one where you're already there, the defenders around you, it was a shorter field with other sort of players close by in the stack. That one, though, proper true charge into the deep space, did indeed pick up a collection of defenders on his way through. But waiting for the opportunity to develop for the Germans, for those big shots, it's going to be key if they're going to continue to hold and certainly get more breaks. They currently, the French leading by those all important two, because if it's just the one break, we're going to go to universe. Well, that's pretty damn exciting too. Oh, yeah. Let's see if they can break this very solid offensive unit by the French as they're led out from a throw. Chemino, Mbe Vogel, and now in the hands of Podzakolski. Mbe Vogel chased into center. Gets the under to Coin. Coin puts one high, and Gerwig does handle. Really admire the body control there of Baumgart, just completely avoiding clattering, even though taking aggressive lines. Le Villayer gets one to Potsakowski. The deep shot goes, Mbe Vogel, the intended receiver. He can't hang on. There is some indication of contact and foul indicated by the hand signals by men on coin, but I think that would have come from Mbe Vogel. That is a hospital pass and a half, Stefan. You've just got a cluster of players. Of course, Umbe Vogel really streaking into the deep space. It seems like he'd already turned around, so I'm not sure if it's the contact from Troutman or the uh, originally before. Yes, in fact, I have to say, David Metzger saying it basically exactly the same thing as me. It's the initial contact, yeah. not Troutman coming uh, sort of from behind, but what an incredible play again from Lily Troutman. Just coming in slightly late, just corkscrewing around and attacking the disc. Yeah, you see looking and, and Mbe Vogel clacking ankles there, and I think that's what causes Mbe Vogel to have to spin around. That's a tough one there. There was contact in many instances of that play. Well, it did look a little bit like that, maybe that early contact, maybe sort of, you know, change the momentum of Mbe Vogel. I would... To be honest, Stefan, I feel that this is probably one of those cases where the disc is fairest just coming back. It was a loose throw into a pack of players. I mean, incredible defense from Troutman. But uh, I think the collision before, it's up to the players on the field, right? Uh, of course. Uh, yeah, going back is is a decent enough resolution. I don't think uh, Mbe Vogel is going to say that, that or to retract that call. He definitely felt some contact. And as such, he'll, he'll probably stick with it. And I think it's pretty fair to contest the same and send it back. The question, I suppose, if we got another look at it, Stefan, was the positioning of Mbe Fogel to kind of get that catch jostling with lurking anyway. We are well over our discussion limit for time. The wonderful uh, scorekeepers are reminding us. Of course, running the uh, scoreboards and the stopwatches, keeping all these athletes to the time limits. But it doesn't seem like there's going to be any resolution. And after this much discussion, the send it back becomes even that much more the evident call. But for the moment, they continue to discuss. Well, both of these teams have had pretty decent spirit records so far in the tournament. Certainly been real as said interesting reading all of the various sort of comments currently spirit leaders in the mixed division are the swiss germans currently second spot but uh, it's going to be a retracted call no oh, accepted accepted there you go wrong hand signal foul accepted it'll be mb vogel's disc on the goal line can they convert mb vogel looking at his stack now goes backwards Watsakowski, who initiated that sequence with that lofty throw, now engages Mbe Vogel, shoots into the dump space, cuts up line, gets it back quickly, bit on his hip. Now back to center, Mbe Vogel looking again, scoops on the offhand, and it goes behind Shemino. 
Germans will get a chance to break. Proper mixed defensive pressure. Melina Koschnitzki there with a fabulous read of the play as it was developing and puts on acres of pressure, clean as a whistle and generates the turnover. But what can Germany do with it, Steph? Let's find out. Tissin with the disc. She winds up, puts it. Not sure that was the best option. Embe Vogel there to make up for his own there and gets it straight back for the French. Pick called on the field. It's all happening here. I'm gonna quote a song lyric to you. How do you solve a problem like, not Maria, but Nasa Mbe Vogel? I could see the option that Tisson was winding up for looking really making a great effort to strike into that deep space but they're gonna have to get another block here to try and change the nature of this match Potsikowski goes to Zervik now back Potsikowski Zervik again and the man Nas sends it and wow that one stuck what a shot from Mbe Vogel and there's the finish uh, there's not much you can say about that throw, except that he traveled. Do, 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 do the hustle. Love that hand, Miss Signals. My favorite of the WFDF rule set. We're going to get uh, players reviewing the tape to see if that one will stand, because, of course, the travel call did not impact anything downfield, but looking is quite... Here it is. Let, let's see if we get one more look. There's some certainty on the toe drag from looking. And We're looking? if we get one more look right now, we can all see. There's a drag there, Embe Vogel accepts that it was a travel and it's gonna go back into his hands. Very clear. I, I, I recall it, uh, a travel or nah video, Stefan. Do you remember that one that was going in from the Dutch Federation from the indoors division where it was a splits travel? <laughs> where you're, you're the, I think the tiptoe stayed exactly where it was, but the whole foot turned over. But hey, footwork technicalities, y'all. Be more netball. They're going to have to make that one count again. That one back in the hands. He's so nice, he'll try it twice. Kwasikowski but gets busted up by Troutman, who's been doing that all day, day long. Oh, they really missed her in that Great Britain game. Lily Troutman, probably my player for this entire mixed division. But I'm a massive fan, girl, so don't listen to me, folks. Stulet goes inside to Kosnitsky. Kosnitsky throws into trouble, and now that one Finally into the hands of Le Villayer, and the French get it done in eventuality. The missed opportunities for this German D-line just keep on coming. The French being put under so much pressure now, but this is how you get breaks in the elite division. Of course, the French coming out, all cannons blazing with those two breaks to start us off here. If that hadn't happened, Stefan, if the Germans had come out with the form on offense that they are now displaying for us when their chosen seven come out with the disc being received, this would be a game going toe to toe. But at the moment, the Germans being asked to rise to the challenge. And they, Vogel is really such a cheat code for any team he plays on the experience but also as we already mentioned he's been playing for such a long time keeping his body in amazing shape uh, nasa's regimen is second to no one he has multiple personal trainers some remote some in home his in home gym is a site uh when he posts his workout pictures in in well in the is no group the club that i was coaching him with last season uh, you, you wonder if he's in a, a five-star gym, but it's the home basement. Well, it just goes to show, folks, you can really have a storied career if you put in the commitment. 
Valchuk and the German O-line begging for a play, but it's Boyol who makes it. Another turn, another chance to break. A incredible performance thus far by the French D-line and there's just no stop in it. The Bourneau sisters go back and forth, back in the hands of Eva. Eva shoots inside, but Metzka cleans that one up. Uh, well, I love the switch off to have Nikki Prien again against Eva Borno. That big wingspan really challenging the throws of the young 13. Hogan to Valchuk. Hogan looks to go up blind, then sweeps back, but it's Metzger who opens up in the dump space. Scoops over top, Prien on the chase, she's there. Nikki Prien has a look up field. Bick was cutting, but she looks for the next option. Metzger comes back. Big dam on the chase. Metzger goes around. Diekman keeps his toes, stays in with the disc. Diekman calls the foul on the mark. There's a little bump there. Very cordial discussion that we can hear from our booth, Stefan. I have to say the communication overall has been generally really respectful in this very intense match. Diekman goes back to Metzka. Metzka, who had Hogan open up but couldn't get him, finds Prien on the inside. Prien looking to get it back to Metzka, but well covered by Begden. Then too far in front for Bake. That was a really awkward throw that Nikki Prien tried to get off. If only she'd had time to change her grip to just an easy backhand dish because there was definitely plenty of space for Saskia Bick. So the French with another break chance. And it is going to be indeed what was just signaled in front of our booth by the sideline players. A timeout here with a potential second, well, not second, a fourth break opportunity. But their first for the second half, if they can punch it in, Stefan. We will find out that much and more after they take their time out, discuss what's best done. And the Germans need a bit more on the adjusting side. The French will hope to maintain what they're doing. We're gonna take a break with them while they take this time out. Don't you go anywhere back home. in action with the timeout being called. Stefan, this is a must get block for the Germans. If they don't manage to hold here and they get broken by the French, do we see them clawing themselves out to get themselves into semi-finals? Because I have to say, I still have a glimmer of belief, but it's small. Yeah, I, I would hate to say it, but the next goal, that's by my uh, outcome well, working out. They're further away from catching up than the other team is to winning if this goal goes against. So. Let's see if they can prevent as the Bourneaux go back and forth. Now, Berthe, Pauline Berthe, the Grenoble monkey, and Diekman asks for Boyon to reset his pivot foot. Boyon gets no, no. The second chance to Bourneau, and Bourneau pulls it down with Volchak on the chase, and there it is, 12-8, three away and four ahead. 
Well, folks, that may well have taken the sizzle out of this match. The pressure, the weight now sat on the shoulders of the German D-line. But, Stefan, coming back into the booth after running the clipboard last season with, of course, a few historic successes yourself, is this now the time where, as the Germany coaches, you just say, OK, we are pulling across all of our top talent. We are back to back. I mean, there's so many athletes to choose from for this German mixed side. But for this first must hold, who are you putting out on the line for the Germans? Yeah, I mean, it's almost a World Games line. It depends on the gender. But if it's three women, I have Volchak, Prien and Troutman are for sure the three I would want on that line. With them, I would probably go to Tissen if it's a, the 4-3. Th and I am at that, if I'm coaching, I am there right now. There is I, no other time for it. 100%. I really think pulling across Tisson. I mean, that's not what they've gone for, but pulling across Tisson for a power O-line in the late stages of this game would be a great choice. Uh, otherwise, I would probably have, uh, for the men, Hornschmeier, uh, Diekmann, Probably Vendaholm based on the way he played in the first game. And to go with them, I'd probably keep the size on there. Maybe uh, Stulet or, sorry, Hogan. Well, Hogan with the want. disc. Now it's Prunes. Prunes goes to Prien. And it bounced off the hands of Prien. That's the last thing they needed. Bru to Nemos. The French flexing their muscles. Bono comes under, a poach is gonna leave somebody open. Not found right away, Voirnesson was the open player. Ruel. Ruel goes deep, Bono, but this time Volchak can do enough to knock it away. Only just. Metzka. From his own end zone. And he tried to jack it, and Eller puts a hand to it, and the French getting everything right still. Bru breaks with the lefty around. Another one for the French. They are pouring it on, flexing and polishing up those muscles. What is it, Stefan, with German teams and crazy, crazy quarterfinals? This is definitely not what we expected this early in the tournament. And it, what has happened to the Germans? I mean, we talked about them potentially getting a clean sweep of all of the medals, doing a bit of USA styly. This one made me have to take some serious deep breaths. Levka Volchak, I mean, you have to think if Volchak had actually caught that D. If she got the play started, ASAP, not just going for the, oh, well, you know, I'm not a key central hander. Every single player on the field needs to step up for this German side. And they are all capable of doing it. They are all so heckin' good. But all right, then, let's have a look at this power line. You're right. Oh, there we go. Caroline Tisson coming across to play some offense. You've got Lily Trautmann. You have Joanna Erdmann. It's a four male matching point. So who else do we got? Tim Baumgart, Torben Hunschemeyer, Lasse Hogan, and of course, one of the defensive standouts all week long so far, Janis Venderholm already with two goals to his tally. Of course, backs up against the wall here for the Germans. They are going to need to hold at minimum. Two points away are the French and the Germans five behind just breaking even. It is well set up for a historic comeback, but it would have to start now. Well, if they do it, go for it, folks. I've got the next game slot off. I can just go lie down in a dark room for forever. I don't, but I could handle the heart palpitations going into one more. Are you sure, Steph? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, get the defibrillators on, on site, please. <laughs> Medic. We are, of course, blessed to have wonderful medical staff. Thanks to you all. Caroline Tissen comes to the mark and looks behind immediately. Vendaholm quickly ahead. That is in the hands of Baumgart, who centers to Hanschmeyer. Hanschmeyer comes around. Vendaholm keeps his toes in. 
or does he? Well, we definitely don't get a great viewpoint from our sideline on here in the booth as to that particular, what was it they called it in Wimbledon? We Some kind of particle. Seem, we always seem very popular when there's a decidable call. Well, the players on the far sideline definitely got the best perspective of all. I have to say, Stefan, sometimes I wonder if we should perhaps change to different lines, like the ones that they have for tennis, where if if the ball hits the line in tennis, you get that little puff of smoke when you're playing on the grass surface. But, of course, the lines out here, a little bit more heavy duty. It's very, very hard to tell from this angle. Yeah, I'm not sure the video replay gives it too much of a better perspective. So send it back. Honschmeyer, inside, Stulet. Stulet goes to Troutman now to Honschmeyer. Tobin Honschmeyer goes backwards. It's Caroline Tizen. There's another under for Troutman. Troutman inside, Stulet. The Germans have just entered the red zone. Tizen picks up again. And there's a pick on the field. Yeah, Lily Troutman. Uh, I actually thought for a minute that the French mark was actually uh, Troutman's, not Tisson's. Caroline Tisson. Goes up, and that's right into two defenders. Big Dem picks up inside to Brew, and Troutman doing everything to try and get that one back after the errant throw. Boyon goes deep, it's Fenrich on the chase. He's there, but so is the defense. They've done just enough to knock it away, and Fenrich talks about the potential contact. Well, we've got a cluster of players in front of our monitor, Stefan. Unsurprisingly, wanting to watch that one in slow motion. I mean, it looks like a very fair contest, you know? Like, in this moment, in this game, both players really gunning for it. Certainly a more acrobatic play from... Is that Tim Stulet? Yeah, it is. One more look at that. Tough one. There, there, there would most certainly have been contact between them, but I, the, my personal opinion was that that was a clean D. Well, and looking. He got it before. He knocked it away before it impact the contact impacted Fenris's ability. Well, looking at the body language there that we didn't get because we were busy looking at the replay from Benjamin Fenris, I think he's kind of signalling that there he felt there was contact on his receiving arm. Of course, uh, that would be a bit more impactful, but it's going to be contested and shall return to the original thrower. Great effort from Torben Horschemeyer on the defense there. Absolutely flew in front of the mark to make it as difficult as humanly possible to execute that huck. But so hats off to Paul Bouillon for really <laughs> ripping that backhand with such fantastic form. But roll back the VT. Back into play, Bouillon. Has Schmidt, and that one floated too high, but Brew almost bailed out. It slowly, when what's the call here? Back we come. A strip being called now. The, I, I believe we're talking the Schmidt Baumgart play there. Yes, indeed. Again, that one I thought was. A fair <laughs> smack away. Here it is again. Very quick indeed. Yeah, it, that, Whoa, that. The players in front of us from the French team have just watched our replay screen and using the rules exceptionally eff effectively and exceptionally well-spiritedly, saying it's still your call, but from the action replay, it does not look like you have possession, Chief. But you can't deny Malvin Schmidt has put his heart, his soul, 
everything, every single molecule of his being into this game. Good communication on the field. Oslin interjecting from the sideline to the detriment of his team. He thought it was the right thing to do, but still being asked to keep his cool and not bring it up. And there we go. So the same play goes, and it goes the way of the Germans this time. I feel like that was the way it might have went the first time. Well, this could be a real momentum changer. What an inside break from Carolyn Tissot. That throw sensational now, Stulet. Stulat lets the stall count mount a little bit, then goes underneath as Troutman fills the space. That one's high, and Vendeholm can't hang on. He throws his hat in disgust. He went up with one hand, Stefan. That way too casual for this moment. I literally have put my hand in front of my face. I can barely watch this. Such a grind, Steph. Justine Bru goes to Fenrich. He readied himself for some impact that didn't necessarily come. Now Beguin de Mo to Boyon. Boyon cuts inside. That's a beautiful throw to Schmidt. Pick on the field. Well, testing the metal over and over again. Melvin Schmidt. Oslo, guidance from the sideline. Got to clean it up, there's far too many picks. And yet, there's a bit of cluster fluster going on, Steph. Indeed there is, Bru gets the throw from Schmidt. Now, quite beautiful throw by Bru to get around the mark of Tissen. And it's in the hands of Schmidt. Van Ries comes screaming under, but that hammer is pinpoint. And the French are on 14. They are one away from a seat in the semi-final, Hannah. Stefan, this French team has so many athletes that are already household names, whether it's from generations past or the up and comers, but Malvin Schmidt has been an absolute pleasure to watch so far. And that hammer over the top, just adding a little something, something extra. The 20 year old's been playing since he was 13 years of age. We talk so much about the youth development programs, the likes of Germany, of Belgium, of all these other different nations, but the French have been just quietly chipping away, getting their teams into championship finals with their under 20s, their under 17s, and Marvin Schmidt, who says his career highlight, of course, until this championship was the World Juniors last season, really just firing, blazing into this match. His club experience, of course, Alcurve. We have now meet, or met the 100 minutes of regulation time. We are in the time cap, but it doesn't matter. With 14 points on the board, it's a game to 15 because of time or because of points. And so we have another power line out for the Germans. Many of their own original stalwarts coming out. See Nicky Priant, who at times has been almost the German offense. So the task at hand is enormous for Germany. They would need to hold here and then break six times in a row. Stefan, I love Germany mixed so much, but I just don't see it. I would love for it to happen and go I, I all mean, the way to universe and then for the French still to win. I think my, they deserve it. My brains would fall out of my head if that did happen, but I prepared for it. I'm prepared <laughs> for that. Give the people what they want. Hogan gets Metzger in, the, in his own end zone. Metzger winds up, he's gone deep. Volchak picks up speed. Hogan's coming, but nobody's gonna get there. Story of this game for Germany. Oh, the throws just not quite where they needed to be. They cleaned it up in the midsection, but that a great example. Not only quite, uh, not quite where they need to be, but 
continuously too long. They're throwing with too much spin, too much power, not accounting for the calmness, perhaps, after a, a week's worth of wind. Well, that's a little bit downwind there. They just need to hold on. Now hold here on. come the French. A chance to win this game. A seat in the semifinals awaits Malvin Schmidt gets a touch. Now it's Shimino. Eller wide open in the underspace. Ruel comes out of the stack, but well guarded by Prien. Now around that one to Voirnesson. Inside break too high. And Nikki Prien gives her team one more beat of the heart. Still don't like it. Still don't like the not catching the Ds. Nikki Prien was capable of catching that disc, going for the quick counter attack. Obviously, there's lots of pressure on, but slow start gives the French the advantage to set up their defense. Metzger gets the first touch. Inside throw on up that sideline to Volchuk. Volchuk holding that disc nearly at the grass, trying to find an easy outlet. Now gets the throw off. Prien's on the chase. Germany extend the game by at least one point. That reset throw up the line from Levko Volchak, the angle of release to have it sit perfectly in front of Metzger, an absolute disc of dream. Celebrate the beautiful moments when they come for this German mix side because there have not been a million of them, of course, getting broken twice to start the first half, then that third break. It looked like they could be on the turning point Midsection the second, Stefan, but that is huge. Four unanswered for the French mixed team. They got knocked out by the Italians. The last tournament they played in quarterfinals. They have learned the lessons. Or so it would seem they've got to score that final point. We heard the Germans last night in the, on the talk show talking about what it takes to finish off a game. The... <laughs> Horrible adage we once used on our team was to hold the puppy under and to get that job done. Uh, but, but the adage does shed light on the gravity of the situation and get like finishing things off properly. I feel like the metaphor for the German mixed team at the moment is they're currently in, sat inside a car that's slowly sinking into a lake. There is the potential to escape, maybe crack a window, open a door, but the pressure is really at fever pitch. O-line hold is a seat in the semis for the French. Poitsakolsky comes under and gets from Mbe Vogel. Now, Anselin in the dump space leads to Poitsakolsky. Pick on the field. Both teams have replaced their spots to account for the pick, and it's back in the hands of Poitsakolsky. He goes forward to Olivier, and there's another pick initiating that sequence. Bit of uh, Gael Arslan, unable to follow his own advice from the sideline, of remembering to be focused on the spacing and avoid the interruption of one's own offensive flow. Erdman will tap it in for Olivier to have a look up. Fouquet, well covered. And that one too far in front for Mbe Vogel. The German's heartbeat continues to thump. Now play the game of keep Mbe Vogel away from the play. So many times for this O-line for France, he's been the player, the athlete, to redeem his teammates. Tissen. Neubert. Too far in front. Oslen goes to Fouquet right away. And Poitsakowski, the French again, retain possession with a chance to win and go into a semifinal. There's a pick on the field. These teams have no concern for my feeling, Stefan, none whatsoever. And I love it. The chat is going absolutely wild. We love you, chat. 
Hit that like button for us. Potsikowski goes to Oslin. He gets horizontal, picks up with two hands, now cuts back to the center. MB Vogel had a wide open throw there, takes it now to Olivier. Olivier swipes the forehand fake twice now, tries to get Nasser in the dump space. Almost handled on def defensively by Erdman, but it's still MB Vogel. Looking to the end zone, waiting for options, nothing yet. In the dump space once again. Olivier back to MB Vogel. And the French seem like they're only going backwards. Fouquet now gets a gainer. Anselin goes to ground and hangs on with two hands. Fouquet overhead. Back to Anselin and a lot of space for the three handlers to work. Anselin pops one over top. Mathias is there. That's the game. The French go into the semifinal. Gaël Arslan with an absolutely sensational final throw. Is there anything that he cannot do? Clara Natias just snuck away to the break side of the field using every inch of her 171 centimetre frame to reel that one. Of course, we'll be seeing her with the women's division for the club scene, but what a way to finish off this game. Opportunities were there for the Germans to get the disc back. They generated turnovers most of the time in that second half, Steph. They had every opportunity to come back into the game. There was one clean hold for the German O-line, but only one clean point for the French that entire second half. They put the pressure on, they were breathing down the necks, but just I think the mental challenge could not be overcome. But what a performance from the French. They clearly came with a point to prove the last time in quarterfinals they got knocked out, but this time they passed through with an emphatic lead. Six points clear, 59. To nobody. nobody's expectation, we thought that this one was going to be an absolute barn burner. Uh, it, the intensity on the field, it was all there but the French just so clinical, so clean in everything they did. And we're gonna get ourselves a nice chat with the legend, Nasser Mbe Vogel. Uh, he's on his way into the booth. We'll let him get his head under here, come to have a chat. Nas, congratulations, come, come up close here. It's a, a, a tight booth. Uh, wow, how's it feel first of all? Tell us about the, getting the win and you're going to the semi-final, what are the immediate feelings? Oh, it feels great. Uh, I mean, like, you know, when you go to a tournament, you know you're, when you go to the quarters, it's going to be like a game winning, or you go home. We're still there, so it feels great. Uh, and again, you did it against one of the clubs, uh, both France and Germany, expected to go very deep. We said at the beginning, one of these countries is going home that is crazy to believe but it's happening nas uh you also had two big blocks in that game both of them came after uh, one error one foul down there they were they were maybe on you the errors and you got it back tell us what it feels like or, or what you were doing to get those blocks back for your team after some errors i mean uh i always be a defender when i was younger <laughs> So I feel great to make some D in, on the uh, semifinals and be there for the team. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I was like in a good, good position every time. So I jumped in a good time and uh, good timing. And yeah, everything on my D was, uh, I was super proud of my defense today. So I'm very happy for that, for the team, for sure. Yeah, there were moments, I think, where I said when the, the Germans had the disc, when they had those opportunities to break you in the second half, I literally said, keep the disc away from Nas because you were just everywhere on defense. We talk about the amazing regimen you have for your physical preparation coming into these games as such an experienced athlete, but how do you mentally prepare for this quarterfinal, as you say, that win or go home challenge? Um, all the season, um, I can say big thank you to Mike Adok who is my trainer from uh, Canada, to Toronto, from Canada. He helped me a lot. He helped me a lot to make sure like I'm ready for the tournament. I was a little bit injured like before the tournament and uh, we worked so hard to make sure like I would give uh, 100% for the team. 
And thanks for the physio here. We, they help me every day to make sure I can be on the field and play. So, yeah, uh, I don't feel old. I know I'm <laughs> old on the game, but I don't feel old for sure. Uh, Nas, one look here of what's up next. Let's look how this bracket goes tomorrow. It's We've got confirmations, all the semifinalists now. The other side of the bracket, Italy, Ireland, you're not worrying about any of that yet. You've got to worry about the defending champions, a rematch of last EUC's final. How do you guys uh, prepare to, to take on GB tomorrow? I think right now we're going to enjoy the, uh, the results of this game against Germany. Uh, support for uh, the French Open right now, and uh, we're going to have a discussion uh, tonight to make sure like we prepare everything for this team. But it's going to be a tough game for sure. It's going to be a very tough game, and uh, we have a lot of respect for every team here. And uh, yeah, semifinal is just like one big game, and uh, and we see what's happening for the next game. Well, I uh, I got this gift from Simon Ruel before the game. I didn't think I could wear it before; it would have been too biased. But I can put it on now. <laughs> well, while Stefan does his uh, his wardrobe change. You mentioned you have so much respect for all of the other teams here. Do you think that the mix is the strongest division this season? Because it's so tough, so many upsets so far. I mean, uh, I have some player asked me what I play when I switch to play mixed. And I was like, it's tough. I mean, there's so many good players in mixed division. And this year too, like you can see Ireland have a lot of good players who were playing with Open in the past. You can see Germany was like fantastic player of both sides so it's very tough like when you uh, when you come here like you know it's going to be very hard like even like we have a tough game against Poland who when you think like we should be better but they were like they were there so everyone wants to be want to beat the best team so yeah always have a big respect for everyone yeah big respect from Nas big respect for Nas the youngest 43 year old I've ever met uh, still getting it done all over the place. Congratulations, <laughs> buddy. You. Go enjoy with your team, Thank and you. we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, what a great uh, great moment to get Nasser in, have a chat with the legend, always special. Uh, the French just performing there, and uh, a heck of a game, Hannah. Not just performing, but absolutely outperforming by a country mile. They held on with grit and determination, got turnovers so many times in the second half. Just that one hold with zero turnovers, but the Germans just could not quite muscle through and get the break. That's going to wrap it up for this game. You know we've got more coming for you, though, on this pitch next. Italy, France in the open division. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for that. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, ultimate. Something
So if you love something